ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه واله وصحبه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Qur'an and through the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explicitly tells us that from the moment of death until a person enters his final abode either Jannah or Jahannam either paradise or the hellfire from that moment of death and every single step thereafter the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will express great forms of regret and sorrow. Will express great forms of regret to the extent that he will call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah jalla wa ala to make that moment that he's experiencing at that particular stage of his afterlife, the last moment of his entire existence, wishing and invoking Allah to destroy him and obliterate him completely. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us regarding the Day of Judgment, يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْضَرًا وَمَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ سُوءٍ تَوَدُّ لَوْ أَنَّ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَهُ أَمَدًا بَعِيدًا وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ وَاللَّهُ رَؤُوفٌ بِلِعِبَادًا He says subhanahu wa ta'ala, that on that day, every single servant of Allah Jalla will come with every single action he's done in this life, good or evil. And he would wish a distance, a long distance to be placed in between him and his evil days, his evil deeds. And the reason because of that, the reason due to this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ وَاللَّهُ رَؤُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ because on that day, even after seeing all of the forms of destruction and suffering and adab and punishment on the day of judgment, what frightens him even more is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns you about himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns you about himself. And this is where from that moment of death, as he says subhanahu wa ta'ala, قَدْ خَسِرَ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِلِقَاءِ اللَّهِ حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَتْهُمُ السَّاعَةَ بَغْتَةً قَالُوا يَا حَسْرَتَنَا عَلَى مَا فَرَّطْنَا فِيهَا He says subhanahu wa ta'ala قَدْ خَسِرَ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِلِقَاءِ اللَّهِ Those people who used to live their lives as if though they used to make a lie upon the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they used to believe they would never meet Allah jalla wa ala حَتَّى until when death comes to them, that moment comes to them in the most least expected time. قالوا, they will say, يَا حَسْرَتَنَا عَلَى مَا فَرَّطْنَا فِيهَا Woe to us how much regret we're going through. We've done nothing to present ourselves. We've done nothing to present deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, جَلَّ وَعَلَى يَوْمَ إِذِي يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَى On that day, mankind will remember what they've put forward and they remember they haven't put anything forward. When is that day when they will see the horrors, when they will see the punishments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set aside and placed for all of mankind to see? Kalla Ida Dukkatil Ardu Dakkan Dakka Waja Rabbuka wal Malaku Safan Safa Waji Yoma Idim Bijahannam Yoma Idi Yatakarul in Sanu wa Anna Lahu Dikra. He says subhanahu wa ta'ala no. Kalla, nay, 
Oh no, when the earth is made into powder and the ground is destroyed completely. And you see your Lord coming and you see the angels coming in their rows after rows. And there you see the hellfire being brought close to the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On that day, mankind will remember. What will he remember? He'll remember what he has lost. He'll remember what he has left behind. He'll remember every single thing he didn't do. He'll remember all of the opportunities that were given to him. Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala used to say, it reached me from, the, from my teachers. And it reached them from the Sahaba, radiyallahu anhum ajma'een, that the actions of the servants of Allah, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, were presented to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Isra al Mi'raj. And he saw sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the actions of the servants of Allah, his Ummah, were only a few in number because they weren't given long lives compared to the nations of the prophets that came before. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Laylatul Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the last nights of the month of Ramadan. And even though he's given us this, O brothers, O sisters in Islam, even though we've been given Ramadan, whereby deeds are multiplied beyond multiplications, we can even comprehend or understand, even though we've been given the last ten nights, which are greater, more virtuous, more noble than any ten nights, any nights in the entire year, even though we've been given Laylatul Qadr, خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهَرٍ That is better than a thousand months, better than a thousand months of worship. Yet still we find the servants of Allah Jalla wa ala, during this noble and virtuous time, yet still, we find the servants of Allah Jalla wa ala throwing away the opportunity to come and find Allah Jalla wa ala's mercy. We still find them throwing away the opportunity from worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of us have stood the night in prayer? How many of us have completed the completion of the Quran, completed the recitation of Quran? How many of us have spent the nights making dua? How many of us have given charity? How many of us have thrown the opportunities that Allah Jalla wa'ala has given to us and thrown it away. Will we not be from these descriptions that Allah Jalla wa'ala speaks about? Those that will go through every single step, every horror, every adab, every punishment on the day of judgment and utter words, utter words of regret, utter words of horror, utter words of sorrow, utter words of great regret. Hence, Ibn Qudama. Rahimahullah ta'ala, Al-Maqdisi, Rahimullah ta'ala, he wrote in his final statement, his wasiyah, his, his, his final testimony at the end of his life to the servants of Allah Jalla wa'ala, reminding them of what they have and what they're about to lose, reminding them of how to make the most of their lives. He says, Rahimahullah ta'ala, فَاغْتَرِمْ يَا رَعَاكَ اللَّهِ فَاغْتَرِمْ يَا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ فُرُسَةِ الْحَيَاءِ He says, O oh, servant of Allah, O worship of Allah, make sure you make the most. You make the most of the opportunity of your life. Make sure, he says, you make the most. Most of the opportunity of your life. He says, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ مُدَّتَكْ فِيهَا مُدَّةً مَحْدُودًا Know, O servant of Allah, that what you have of your life in this world is very, very limited. وَأَنَّ أَنْفَاسَكْ فِيهَا and fast and ma'duda, and the amount of times you breathe in this world is limited as well. You only have a certain amount of breaths, you only have a certain amount of days, everything is limited for you. He says, Rahimahullah ta'ala, wa anna kullu nafsin minha jawharatun, and rather every single person, Allah Jalla wa'ala has given them a pearl or given them some great forms of treasure, ghaliyatan, that are expensive extremely expensive such that there is no measurement and no value of this earth that is worth what they've been given every single servant has been given a treasure a treasure that is so expensive that nothing on this earth nothing on this earth can be measured or given its value for that particular treasure he's been given and he says what is this treasure this treasure he says is a treasure that will allow you to be in the presence of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
allow you to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a treasure in the sense of your life a treasure in the sense of the moments of your life a treasure in the sense that Allah Jalla has given you opportunities to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says how foolish how foolish is it for the one that's given a pearl and he exchanges it for nothing at all how foolish is the one who's given the vast great amount of treasure and he simply throws it away and allows other people to take it without giving him any form of wealth he says oh servant of Allah do not be like this person you have been given treasure you have been given your life you have been given days and you've been given nights you've been given the month of Ramadan you've been given the last nights of the month of Ramadan don't be somebody that doesn't exchange it for good deeds he ends by saying the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ni'matan maghboodun fihima kathirun min al-nas there are two blessings that the vast majority of the people on earth will throw away will not make the most of as-sihha wal faragh having good health and having that time having good health and having free time or oh, brothers or oh, sisters in islam what lies before us are only a few more nights the entire month of ramadan it feels as if though it only started yesterday yet subhanallah we are only experiencing now the last few days of the month of ramadan we have with us inshallah ta'ala two more opportunities of odd nights two more nights whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have blessed this ummah with Laylatul Qadr if we haven't already surpassed and missed Laylatul Qadr. We have so far, or oh brothers or oh sisters in Islam, three or four more days of worship, three or four more days of Ramadan, three or four, three or four more days whereby the doors of Jannah are open and the doors of Jahannam are closed and the shayateen are chained and locked up and a caller calls every single day and saying, Ya, oh, but a person who wants to do good, come forward. Or person, Yabaghi al Khair, Aqbil, or the one who wants to do good, step forward, this is your time. Or the ones who want to do evil, step back, this is not your time. How many times has this caller called every single night? But where have we been? And have we responded? Every night he calls saying, Oh, the one who wants to do good, this is your time. This is your opportunity. This is the moment you're going to regret if you don't step forward. But how many of us have answered this call? No, brother or sister in Islam, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّمَ الْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ That your actions are by your ends. Your actions are by your ends. You are defined by how you conclude actions. You are determined, you are defined by how you conclude actions. If you have thrown away the first 25, 26 days of the month of Ramadan, then no, brother or sister in Islam, you still have a chance to define for yourself what this Ramadan truly means to you. You still have a chance to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what these last few days mean to you. And through your actions and through your ibadah in these last few days, this is how you are defined. And this is how Ramadan is defined for you. Be like the Sahaba, be like the Anbiya of Allah, alladheena yabitoona rabbihim sujjada wa qiyama. Those who used to spend their nights in sujood, and in standing to Allah Jalla wa Ala, فَتَجَافَى جُنُوبُهُمْ أَنِ الْمَضَاجِي يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا They should be those who used to stand up in the late parts of the night, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fear, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sujood, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dua, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to conclude the month of Ramadan with ibadah. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from the people that have regret. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us of those who have all of our sins forgiven in these last few days. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa risa il muslimin fa astaghfiru inna Allah ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. والصلاة والسلام على إشراف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. This is the last خطبة in the month of Ramadan. It's imperative for us to know some of the rulings of fiqh 
pertaining to Eid day, and in particular, the Sadaqatul Fitr or Zakatul Fitr, inshallah ta'ala. Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhumma mentions in a hadith reported by Abu Dawood and others. He says, Qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, he said, فرض, فرض الرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم زكاة الفطر The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has made زكاة الفطر obligatory upon the ummah. زكاة الفطر is obligatory upon the entire ummah. Every elderly, every man, every woman, every child. And even according to some of the scholars of Islam, والله تعالى أعلم, even a child within the mother's womb. If the child within the mother's womb has passed a particular age, Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Therefore, every single servant of Allah Jalla wa'ala must carry out, must pay the zakatul fitr. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, he explains the wisdom behind zakatul fitr. He says, radiallahu ta'ala an, he says, the zakatul fitr, he says, is tuhratan lil sa'im, min al laghwi, wal rafath, wa tu'matan lil masakin, min addaha qabla salata, fahiya zakatun maqbula, wa man addaha ba'da salat, fahiya sadaqatun min sadaqat. He says, Radiallahu ta'ala an, the zakatul fitr is tuhratan lil sa'im. It's something that purifies the one who fasts. Min al laghwi wal rafath. It purifies the one who fasts from every type of evil that he did during his fast. Every sin he committed, every deficiency he found in his fast, the zakatul fitr, he purifies his fast. And this was some of the scholars of Islam, like Waki, Ibn al Jarrah, rahimullah ta'ala, used to say, zakatul fitr, zakatul fitr. It's like the sajda to sahu. It's like the prostration of forgetfulness that a person does when he's made mistakes in his salah. The prostration of forgetfulness removes the mistakes and it returns the salah back to perfection when it's presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, the zakatul fitr is like this. When a person gives zakatul fitr, it purifies his fasts from every type of imperfection and deficiency and mistake or sin. That the person carried out in the month of Ramadan. He says Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma is tuhratan lil sa'im min al laghwi wal rafath. It purifies the one who fasts from laghu, from evil sins and evil actions. Wa tu'matan lil masakin. And it's a type of food for the servants of Allah jalla wa ala that are poor. He says whoever gives it before this salat of Eid, he has given zakat al fitr. And whoever gives it after the Salat of Eid, he's only given a sadaqah. Therefore, our brothers or sisters in Islam, Zakat al-Fitr is obligatory upon every single person. And rather the ulama of Islam, they mention those that are the heads of the families in their homes, for which they have people that are under, they support in their risk, they support in their wealth, they support in their food. They are the ones to whom this obligation lies upon, inshallah ta'ala. So a person lives within a home, and in his home he finds his mother or his father. In his home, he finds his wife or his children. Even perhaps he finds other siblings or other people in his home that all rely upon him for wealth. Zakatul fitr is obligatory upon the head of the household, inshallah ta'ala. The head of the household must give a certain amount of food, sa'un, a sa' of food to the poor people. However, this sa' is often given by the charities and the charity companies. The servant of Allah Jalla wa'ala should look to the charity company or should look to the charity organization and give them wealth for which they will then purchase food and give to the poor and needy, inshallah ta'ala. No, oh brothers or oh sisters in Islam, that from the fiqh of Eid, that the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must remember Allah Jalla wa'ala by making takbir the moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us through the sighting of the moon. That it is Eid day, or Eid is going to be the following day. He says, Subhanahu wa Taala, "Wali tuk minu li Eid data, wali tuk kabbiru Allah, ala mahadakum wa laa lakum tashkurun." When the Eid has been seated, when the Eid and the, the moon has been sighted, and we have completed the month of Ramadan, Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu ma used to say, "At that Maghrib, the servant of Allah jalla wa ala follows the Sunnah of making takbir to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala." He says, this is the haq of the Muslim, the right of the Muslim to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that particular way. To glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the point of Maghrib, he says, radiyallahu anhuma. While some of the Sahaba differed, and some of them chose at the moment of after Fajr, Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma's view takes precedence due to the fact that the months in the Islamic calendar begin at Maghrib as opposed to after Fajr, wallahu ta'ala alam. 
Furthermore, it is from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to bring all men and women and children and the elderly to the Eid Salah, inshallah ta'ala. In fact, it was even a sunnah, as Umm Atiyah radiallahu anha used to mention in a hadith reported in Bukhari Muslim, that even the menstruating women were brought to perform the Eid Salah. But they were told to sit in a sitting, away from the gathering of jama'ah, away from the congregation, away from the actual place where the people used to pray, so they can hear the khutbah and benefit in the celebration of Eid. It's from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that before the Salat al Eid is performed, as mentioned in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhum. Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhum, he mentions that the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that before the Eid prayer, the servant of Allah jalla wa ala should consume, should eat an odd number of dates. And the reason why he does this is to show himself that this is a day of eating and not a day of fasting. As opposed to Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Adha, the sunnah, is to eat after the Eid prayer and to eat if a person can from his actual slaughtering, from his qurbani, his udhiya, from his slaughtering, inshallah ta'ala. But as for Eid al-Fitr, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to eat an odd number of dates. It's also from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anh mentions, is to walk if you can to the masjid. And if you're able to walk to the masjid, or if you're not able to walk to the masjid, the sunnah for returning is to take a route other than the route that you came with. It's also from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as reported by many of the sahaba, including the likes of Anas ibn Malik, ibn Abbas, and Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhum, that the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Eid is to take a ghusl, to take a bath, to purify oneself, to wear clean clothes, and to beautify oneself if they are from the male servants of Allah jalla wa ala, with strong perfume. And it's the sunnah of Islam, or brothers or sisters in Islam, to take that day as a day of celebration. To take that day as a day of celebration for all believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To make it a day of honor and glory for our children, for our family members. Because they will, if they're not given the glories and the celebrations of Eid, then they'll look for forms of glory and happiness in the celebrations of the, and the festivals of the kuffar. That's the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is to make this day, the day of Eid, a day of celebration. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to live until Eid and beyond. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to have many other Ramadans in the future. Whereby we have health, whereby we have ilm, whereby we can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by. We ask Allah jalla wa ta'ala to make this Ramadan a hujja for us, not against us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to find Laylat al-Qadr. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all of our du'as, all of our qiyam, all of our salah, all of our recitation of the Quran, all of our fasts, all of our sadaqah, all of the good that we've done in this month. Allahumma a'iz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma a'idhil al-Shirk wa al-Mushrikin. Allahumma innaka afu wa tuhibbu al-Afu wa fa'fu anna. Allahumma rabbana atina fi al-Dunya hasana wa fi al-Akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-Nar. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamidu majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamidu majid. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Qumu lis-salam.